Hey, what's going on, everybody? Mark Damati here. You can find me on Instagram at markdarts. That's M-A-R-K-D underscore A-R-T-S. In this tutorial, I'm going to be doing a quick demonstration on how to change any color you choose into a principal PMS Pantone color. Now, if you don't know what PMS Pantone colors are, um, first of all, before I even explain, let me just pull it up. So you're gonna go to your swatches panel by going to the window and then go to swatches. You know, this is a little bit more of something you may do when you're working in the industry. Um, but see, you have your swatches palette right here. So let me just pull this out. So in order to get our Pantones open, we're gonna hit these um, three lines right here, basically. And we're gonna go to open swatch library. And then we're gonna go to color books. And then you can see here, we have Pantone CMYK coded, pan, you know, uncoded, all these different Pantone books. But let's just open up um, solid coded. So I, I don't need this anymore. Let me just open this guy up. So these are our Pantone solid coded series of colors. So PMS is a library of colors, typically pre-mixed colors or preset colors. And these colors are used to identify easily, you know, within the industry, within the design industry to printers or producers or the designer or anyone who really is trying to communicate colors um, remotely because not everyone has the same printer. Every printer print, uh, prints differently and different colors come out on different surfaces. And there's a, n a number of things that influence the way color comes out when you print versus what it looks like on screen. So that's really the purpose of PMS. It allows people to communicate on a more, more than visual level. You know, people have these PMS books in front of them or in their offices where I could be like to the client, I need this color, this logo to match PMS 278 as much as possible. And they now know to look at PMS 278 and to see what color that looks like. And if they print anything out, now they can, you know, put it up to it and see if it matches well. It's just a, it's a good system for us printers and designers to communicate colors, especially in branding. It's very important to make sure you keep the same colors, especially on those big brands like Canon and Google. Those certain tones of colors really mean a lot. Um, but pretty much, uh, right now I'm working in the RGB color space. That is the screen color space. And I just wanna show you um, in that color space because it's a good demonstration of picking a cool color in RGB because there's a lot more you know, vibrancy and brightness in our RGB spectrum but sometimes you have to be able to print that and we don't wanna have the wrong colors um, being put into our printer software. So if we have an RGB color, we put it into a printer, we don't want the printer or whatever whatever the rip soft, you know, whatever software you're using, we don't want that to do the color changing typically. We want the color to be set in Illustrator and in your PDF or whatever you're printing first before you go and automatically have the colors automatically changed via printer. So I'm just gonna open up a RGB square here. I'm just gonna color it um, a really super bright red, something you wouldn't really be able to print, right? Actually, you know what, let's do blue. Blue's even harder to print. Um, so let's go super bright, super vibrant, something that we can't even print probably. So now the thing is, if you wanted to take this blue and you needed to make it a printable color and you need to make sure that you can perfectly distinguish between your clients you know you have this colored blue or the shade blue especially not everyone's screen is the same you know between printers and screens there's a lot of color differentiation a lot of confusion so this is why we have these systems in place but nonetheless so i have this blue square here and i'm going to make this the closest possible pantone color that i can get and by doing that is i'm not going to be doing it manually um, I'm not gonna be like fishing around and looking for the closest blue like this, you know, and that's, this is now what we're gonna do. We're gonna click our color here, and then we're gonna go to the edit tab up here, and hit the drop down, and then we're gonna go to edit colors, and then we're gonna go to, realistically, um, these recolor things are kind of hand in hand, but right now for this demonstration, we're gonna be using a recolor with preset, and then we're gonna do one color job because we're only changing one color. Um, why there's only up to three color jobs, Typically in screen printing or the printing process when it comes to t-shirts or just most design, whether it's brands or you know whatever you're dealing with, most companies only have up to three colors. And typically when the screen printer um, can only do three um, different types of plates and colors. So that's where that kind of background comes from. But in this case, we're gonna hit one color job because we're only working with one selected color. You can do up to three colors at once though. I have had trouble with it. Sometimes it doesn't work, but you can do three colors at once. Anyway, 
hit one color job. So then you have this little menu here, and what we need to do with this menu is we need to basically assign the preset that we're changing this color to. And we're gonna assign that preset into our Pantone solid coated color system. So let's see what happens, watch. I'm gonna put my preset as Pantone coated, and you see it has now changed this blue into the closest possible Pantone blue that uh, we can get. So you can see here that um, this is our recolor artwork menu. I don't, I'm not gonna go too in depth with this right now. I can do this in another tutorial or you can look this up um, separately if you'd like away from my videos. But you're just gonna hit okay. And now we could see that this blue, if you go to our window and we hit our color tab, if you don't have it open, this color tab, you could see that now it is Pantone 2736C, which is, if I can search it in here, there it is, that's our blue. So if I click this blue, nothing should change. There you go. And Pantones don't have any, usually, mixture of CMYK. Um, they are pre-mixed inks, and typically, when you're working with a Pantone, you only have white to that hue, as a pure hue. So just be aware of that, that if you try and change this color, you might not be able to, it might not let you. Uh, oh, it did, okay. Sometimes it doesn't. But nonetheless, that is how you change any color into the closest possible Pantone color. Um, when you're working with print. So let's just do that one more time. I'm just made a pink one, edit colors, recolor with preset, one color job. We're gonna go to our Pantone solid coated right here, click it, and then click okay. And then we can see that we now have Pantone 205C as our closest possible change. And we didn't really, there's really not much difference there. There is some difference, but you can see that's a very helpful technique, especially when you're working in a design firm and you take files from clients and then we need to make a printable file, this process is used a lot, especially in screen printing and t-shirts. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I don't need to save this. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Pretty simple, right? Just A, B, C, put color down, edit colors, and next thing you know, you have a perfect color change between an RGB or you can do CMYK from RGB to CMYK to Pantone color, pre-mixed ink, communicable with printers and designers throughout the world, regardless of screen color, regardless of printer type, regardless of ink type, people can use these PMS codes as a way to communicate. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Mark Dimatti. You can find me on Instagram at markdarts, that's M-A-R-K-D underscore A-R-T-S. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm making videos a lot, it mean a lot to me. If you could just give me some engagement and just let me know how I'm doing, or if you don't like the videos, or if you have any recommendations for new videos or tutorials, I do a lot of designs, so I'd be more than happy to um, fulfill any recommendations from the community. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.